today i am going to move on to bacteriology which will be discussed in two parts general bacteriology and special bacteriology now general bacteriology we will be discussing the general characteristic of bacteria that is bacterial anatomy physiology we would be discussing sterilization and bacterial genetics whereas in special bacteriology we are going to discuss the special characteristic of each organism in detail coming to general bacteriology at the end of this topic all of you should be familiar with the, the bacterial anatomy you should know the cell structure of both the eukaryotic cells and the prokaryotic cells you should be familiar with the differences between gram positive and gram negative cell wall and you should know all the staining methods which we are going to do practically in your uh, practical classes as well and you should know what a capsule is the function of flagella pili or uh, the fimbria and you should know the defective cell walls which are protoplast spheroplast and the l forms and then you should be familiar with sporulation now coming to microorganisms what are cells the fundamental unit of life of all organisms except viruses is a cell even if we look at our cells we human being are actually intricately coordinated aggregates of cells microorganisms are generally unicellular and they are capable of performing all the functions which are required for its maintenance and propagations in fact all living cells share a biochemical likeness and uh, many of us many of these cells are going to use the same chemical constitute constituents to build up their structural component and the same genetic code to transmit hereditary information broadly speaking these uh, microbes have been divided into two groups the eukaryotic cells and the prokaryotic cells and then we have a non cellular group which are the viruses and we are going to discuss this in detail when we move on to the chapter on viruses and generally viruses are defined as uh, uh, structures which are obligatory intracellular parasites not capable of independent existence now u means true and uh, karyoid is the nucleus so eukaryotes are the ones that these are the cells which have a true nucleus surrounded by a nuclear membrane that separates it from the cytoplasmic contents of the cell and this includes the protozoa unicellular algae fungi and it also includes the animal cells the plant cells and the multicellular algae coming to the prokaryotes which are the bacterial cells and we are going to discuss this bacterial cell in detail because you know, need to know the anatomy of a bacterial cell before we move on to the special uh, bacteriology so this picture is showing you basically the structure between the pro prokaryotes or the bacterial cell and the eukaryotic cells or let's take the example of human cells or plant cells this is a prokaryotic cell if you look at the outer structure this is the capsule the outermost layer is the capsule beneath the capsule this green is the cell wall now cell wall is unique for the bacterial or the prokaryotic cell it is never seen in the eukaryotic cells eukaryotic cells just have this cytoplasmic membrane and no cell wall then as you move to the cytoplasm you can see this region which is known as the nucleoid region now what is this nucleoid region this is the region where the uh, hereditary information is suspended in the portion of cytoplasm uh, and this is known as the nucleoid region so the dna does not have a nuclear membrane it is lying free in the cytoplasm in a region which is called the nucleoid region now coming to the animal cell we all know that the nucleus is surrounded by a well defined nuclear membrane and it has nucleolus in it plus it uh, uh, has uh, other structures suspending suspended in the, uh, the cytoplasm which are known as the intracellular organelles now these intracellular organelles are number 1 like the mitochondria here you can see the mitochondria and they this is uh, uh, the structure 
for respiration of the cell. Then it has these stacks of membranous uh, 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 tubes which are constitute the Golgi apparatus and this is the site where the uh, proteins or the enzymes which are produced by the ribosomes are collected and some of these are converted into uh, lysosomes. And then we have this uh, endoplasmic reticulum which is uh, again uh, it's basically internal membrane network which it extends throughout the cytoplasm from the outer membrane of, uh, uh, to the nucleus and it is going to increase the surface area of the cell enabling the material to reach all parts of the larger uh, this eukaryotic cells and it also contains enzymes that are going to perform the various functions. Besides this it has ribosomes now both the eukaryotic cells and the prokaryotic cells have ribosomes but the size of these ribosomes is different in case of eukaryotic cells it is 80s in size which is, means it is much bigger as compared to the 70s that you see in the prokaryotic cells um, these uh, ribosomes are the sites where proteins are synthesized and they may be found free in the cytoplasm and these uh, proteins will be used within the cell or uh, by the cell whereas the ribosomes which are associated with the endoplasmic reticulum are going to synthesize proteins that are released from the cell and they are going to break down the food particles which are uh, which are present um, outside the cell so keeping this in mind this slide is showing you in, in a tabulated form the differences between the eukaryotic cell and the prokaryotic cell. So coming first to the nuclear region, the eukaryotic cell has a well-defined nuclear membrane which is not seen in the prokaryotic cell. It has a nucleolus. Now what is a nucleolus? Nucleolus basically is uh, uh, the site which manufactures structural com components used in protein synthesis. So this is present in the eukaryotic cell but not seen in the prokaryotic cell. Chromosomes more than one are seen in the eukaryotic cells and just one is seen in the prokaryotic cell. If you look at the cytoplasm, the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cell is in continuous motion which is known as streaming of the cytoplasm and it contains a large number of membrane bound organelles like the mitochondria, like the vacuoles, like the Golgi apparatus or the endoplasmic reticulum and all these structures are absent in the prokaryotic cell. Mesosomes, if you go back to the first slide, all right. Mesosomes is uh, these are in this is basically invagination of uh, the cytoplasmic membrane and this is seen in the prokaryotic cell but not seen in the eukaryotic cell and the ribosomes I have already told you the ribosomes of uh, uh, the eukaryotic cells are larger in size they are ATS, ATS as compared to the prokaryotic cells where they are 70s in nature. Coming to the surface layers now the cytoplasmic membrane is present both in the eukaryotic cells and the prokaryotic cells. But in the eukaryotic cells, the cytoplasmic membrane has sterols and these sterols are like ergosterol in fungal cells or uh, like uh, the cholesterol in human cells and they are not seen in the prokaryotic cell. Peptidoglycan layer is unique for prokaryotic cells. This structure is, is present in the cell wall and it gives rigidity to the cell to the, ce uh, the cell plus it gives shape to the cell. So this peptidoglycan layer is unique for it's only seen in the prokaryotic cell. It is not seen in the eukaryotic cell. Flagella if present in the prokaryotic cells will make this, the cell motile and it is composed of flagellin. In case of eukaryotic cells it is made of Made, made up of microtubules. The size obviously of the prokaryotes is very small as compared to the eukaryotic cells which can be as large as uh, 25 micron meters in diameter. Now this picture is showing you the general structure of a bacterium. In your exams at times you are asked to draw in detail a bacterial cell. So this is how you're going to draw a bacterial cell coming from outside the outermost, this blue is the capsule. Beyond this capsule is the cell membrane, uh, sorry, the, the cell wall. This lemon is the cell wall and the mustard 
is the cytoplasmic membrane or the plasma membrane. Now this plasma membrane can get into the cytoplasm. There is infolding of the plasma membrane in the cytoplasm which is, which is called mesosome. And these mesosomes are going to increase the surface area of the cytoplasmic uh, uh, membrane and is going to help this uh, uh, cell in respiration and excretion of the waste products. Then uh, coming inside, here you can see the blue is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm contains a free DNA present in the nucleoid region. So this is present in the nucleoid region and you have plasmids which are extra chromosomal DNAs capable of autonomous existence and we'll be discussing this in detail when we move on to uh, antibiotic resistance. Plus it has uh, these small uh, ribosomes and uh, the, these cytoplasmic inclusions of food vacuoles etc will also be seen. Coming out of the cytoplasmic membrane is this flagella which comes out of the cell wall and this is responsible for the motion or movement of the bacterium. Plus a bacterial cell has these villi or pili again coming out of the cytoplasmic membrane here and they are also known as fimbria and they are responsible for attachment of these cells to the various sites. So, this is the general structure of a bacterial cell which has been characterized into two groups intracellular structures and extracellular structures and the baseline is the plasma membrane. So anything or any structure which is outside uh, the plasma membrane uh, or uh, are the extracellular structures and the ones which are lying inside the plasma membrane are the intracellular structures. So the intracellular structures includes mesosomes, it, it has ribosomes, the genetic material which is a single stranded circular chromosome present in the nucleoid region and then it can has, have plasmid which I have told you are extra chromosomal DNA. The extracellular structures includes the cell wall which is outside the plasma membrane. Beyond the cell wall is the capsule or slime layer and then we have flagella and fimbria which are moving out of the cell wall and they are going to perform their own functions. Coming to the most important part of the bacteria and that is the cell wall. Now what is the cell wall composed of? As I told you just now that the most important structure in the cell wall is the peptidoglycan layer. The peptidoglycan layer is the most important structure and this layer is basically responsible for the shape of the bacterial cell and it is also going to prevent the cell from osmotic lysis, physical or osmotic lysis. When this layer is removed and the cell wall is removed, then water can just move inside the cell, increase the size of the cell and would result in the osmotic lysis of a bacterial cell. Coming back to peptidoglycan, it is made of peptides which are basically amino acids and glycans which are sugar and this constitutes the backbone of uh, the cell wall. Now the sugars are of two types, they are either N-acetylmuramic acid which is known as NAM, this is NAM and N-acetylglucosamine which is called NAG. These sugars alternate with each other to form long parallel chains and attached to the NAM portion, if you look here, attached to the NAM portion are tetrapeptide, these four chains of amino acid side chains and these amino acid side chains are interconnected to each other by identical peptide bonds. Besides this, it is also attached to tetrapeptide or pentapeptide cross bridges and these cross bridges are going to connect the different layers of the peptidoglycan with each other. So the different layers are connected with each other. In other words, the peptidoglycan layer, the single layer of peptidoglycan layer is a network of adjacent sugar bound by amino acid uh, side chains. And the single, this single layer is going to cross link with another layer by means of these cross bridges. And each single layer is going to increase the strength of the cell. So you need to know what this peptidoglycan layer is made up of. These are sugars alternating with each other and attached to the NAM portion 
are the tetrapeptide amino acid side chains or the pentapeptide cross bridges and these cross bridges are going to connect the different layers together and it is going to increase the strength of the cell. This is another picture showing you the structure of peptidoglycan layer. As you can see the two sugars which are interconnected to each other by uh, uh, the, this amino acid bond, N-acetylmuramic acid, N-acetylglucosamine to the NAM portion either they are tetrapeptide chains attached to each other by identical, you can see these identical peptide bonds or they are attached to the NAM portion are the tetrapeptide amino acid chains or pentapeptide amino acid chains which are going to connect the different layers of this peptidoglycan together. Again another slide just to make things clearer you can see these alternating sugars connected to each other by this uh, these amino acid you can see these amino acid bonds and um, these sugars are the same identical sugars. Now these sugar, the, the, uh, the chains this the amino acid chains can lysozymes are going to act here and they are going to break down the beta 1 4 uh, uh, linkage which is present between the, these uh, sugars. So you can see these penta bridges and this is NAM and that is NAM. No. So keeping this in mind, <coughs> we are going to move on to gram-positive bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria are the cell wall of these organisms. If you look at this slide, you can easily make out that it has a thick peptidoglycan layer. You can see the peptidoglycan layer is composed of several layers. If you look at this part again you can see the thickness of this peptidoglycan layer. So basically the cell wall of gram positive bacteria is composed of several layers of peptidoglycan and, um, and the, the thickness of this peptidoglycan makes the gram positive bacteria highly resistant to osmotic lysis. In addition to peptidoglycan most gram positive contains the stichoic acid. Now stichoic acid is either connected to the peptidoglycan layer and it is known as peptidoglycan stichoic acid or it goes and gets attached to the cytoplasmic or the plasma membrane then it is known as lipotichoic acid. Lipotichoic acid is the one which is attached to the here to the cytoplasmic membrane and the peptidoglycan tachoic acid is the one which remains attached to the peptidoglycan. So in other words gram positive cell wall has a thick peptidoglycan layer which constitute about 50 to 80 percent of uh, the cell wall and tachoic acid, uh, tachoic acid is the major surface antigen. It is coming out of the surface of this gram positive bacteria so they are known as major surface antigens. They are believed to be water soluble polymers of rabitol or glycerol and the basic function of uh, uh, this tachoic acid is to introduce septic shocks associated with gram positive bacteria. At the same time it is going to regulate the autolytic enzymes which are required for cellular division and it is going to prevent the excessive breakdown of the cell lysis during cell, uh, cellular growth. Now the gram positive bacteria besides stichoic acid can also contain uh, these uh, auxiliary molecules which are known as mRNT protein. These mRNT protein are mainly seen as in strep pyogenes and they are going to prevent its engulfment by uh, the phagocytic cells. The tachoic acid and uh, cell associate proteins are the major surface antigens. And what are the antigens? Antigens are molecules that are going to stimulate the host immune response to produce antibodies. So these antibodies are going to react with the antigens on the bacterial surface and are going to help the host in eliminating these uh, molecules, these molecules or these uh, microbes. Next, we are going to talk about gram-negative bacteria. Now, gram-negative bacteria has a thin peptidoglycan layer. If you look at at this slide you can see just one layer of peptidoglycan. So it has one or two layers of peptidoglycan as compared to gram positive bacteria which had a thick peptidoglycan layer. And then it has a very important space which is known as this periplasmic space. Now the periplasmic space you are asked about in your exams you get an MCQ on the periplasmic space. It is the space which lies 
between the inner cytoplasmic membrane and the outer membrane of gram negative bacteria the inner is the cytoplasmic membrane and the outer is the outer membrane which is the major permeability barrier seen in gram negative cell wall so coming to uh, this periplasmic space we know the boundaries now and this contains this peptidoglycan layer plus it co is composed of or it contains degradative enzymes like the penicillin binding proteins etc and uh, outside this periplasmic space is the outer membrane and the outer membrane is made up of lipopolysaccharides which means that it has lipids and it has polysaccharides now this portion which is coming out of the cell wall are the polysaccharides and the blue portion here is the lipid A. In, <coughs> interspersed are these fluorine channels which are gene mediated, mediated channels and they are going to help the various antibiotics and the nutrients to enter this cell. So this is the cell wall of gram negative bacteria composed of periplasmic space and the outer membrane which is lipopolysaccharide. Now the lipopolysaccharide has three main regions. Region 1 is made up of 25 repeating units of 3 to 5 sugars and this is also known as somatic O antigen. <coughs> it is highly variable and it is responsible for antigenic diversities associated with different species. Then this is the middle region, region 2 which is known as the core polysaccharide and it is going to connect uh, region 1 with the third region and this third region is phospholipid called lipid A which is the most important region. It is an integral part of the bacterial gram negative cell wall and it is that is why it is also known as endotoxin. Endotoxins are the integral part of gram negative cell wall. You are asked about in your exams, you get MCQs on this. And this is responsible for the endotoxic shock associated with gram negative bacteria. So, in your exams, in your table YY, you are asked to give the differences between the cell wall of gram negative and gram positive bacteria. The major difference is the thickness of the peptidoglycan layer and then with gram negative bacteria as I've just told you it has an outer membrane which is the major permeability barrier and then it has the periplasmic space which is the space between the inner and outer membrane inner cytoplasmic membrane and the outer uh, a major permeability membrane and it is going to store the enzymes like penicillin binding proteins and it also has the single or two layer of peptidoglycan. Whereas gram positive bacteria lack these two things, it does not have outer membrane and periplasmic space, it just has stichoic acid. <clears throat> this slide is showing you the difference between bacterial cell wall, both gram positive and gram negative. In your exams, you are asked to draw the cell wall of gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So this is how you're going to draw them. This is gram positive bacteria. Cytoplasmic membrane is the same in both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Phospholipid bilayer is the same. And with gram positive bacteria, it has thick peptidoglycan layer. With gram negative bacteria, it has a very thin peptidoglycan layer. Then with gram positive bacteria, they could they stichoic acid which can be attached to the cytoplasmic membrane. Then they are known as lipotichoic acid, or they are going to get attached simply to the cell peptidoglycan layer or of the cell wall, and they are known as peptidoglycan tichoic acid. If you come to the gram negative bacteria, it has this well defined periplasmic space which lies between the cytoplasmic membrane and the outer membrane. The outer membrane, you can see these uh, porine channels in the outer membrane, plus it has lipid A and coming out of the lipid A is the polysaccharide, which is the O antigen responsible for its antigenic diversities. And the lipid A is responsible for the endotoxic shock associated with this parasite, with the bacteria. Again, another slide showing you the differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Now, when you are asked to 
tabulate the differences between gram positive and gram negative bacteria this is how you're going to answer the question gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria thick peptidoglycan layer with gram negative bacteria it is thin 80% of the cell is made up of peptidoglycan layer whereas in case of gram negative bacteria it is just 5 to 10% ticoic acid is present in gram positive bacteria plus it can also have mr and t proteins but there is no lipopolysaccharide and there is no periplasmic space on the other hand if you look at the gram negative bacteria it has a well defined uh, lipopolysaccharide which is composed of uh, this uh, lipid a and the polysaccharides and plus it has the periplasmic space present in it now coming to the functions of the cell wall what is the function of a cell wall the most important function is that it is going to give shape and rigidity shape and rigidity to the, to the cell once you remove the cell wall then there is going to be the water is going to move in and there is going to be osmotic lysis of the cell so it is going to protect the cell from osmotic lysis and but once you remove it it is going to be converted into different forms like the protoplast or the spheroplast or the L forms and which are, can easily undergo osmotic lysis then because of its uh, uh, this uh, uh, it plays a very important role in virulence and immunity because it is antigenic in nature and it forms the basis of gram staining basis of gram staining means that on the basis of the thickness of its peptidoglycan layer the organisms are either considered as gram positive or they are considered as gram negative then uh, it is responsible the gram negative bacteria have these uh, uh, lipopolysaccharides which are responsible for endotoxic shock and it also has coantigens which is which are somatic coantigens responsible for its antigenicity it is going to take place in cellular division and it has receptor sites to which the bacteriophage or bacterial viruses are going to come and get attached so this these are the functions of a bacterial cell wall now defective cell wall formation has also been seen and this uh, defective forms are uh, either L forms or they are protoplasts or they are spheroplasts. Now protoplasts are seen in gram positive bacteria in which the cell wall is either is entirely removed either by mechanical or by enzymatic me methods. For example either lysozymes can remove uh, uh, or destroy the cell wall or the penicillins are going to prevent the synthesis of peptidoglycan layer resulting in formation of cell-less bacteria which are protoplast, spheroplast or L forms. Now protoplasts as I said are seen in gram positive bacteria from which the cell wall has been entirely removed whereas spheroplasts are seen in gram negative bacteria which have their cell wall partially removed and a little bit of the outer membrane remains attached to the cytoplasmic membrane and this is by the action of enzymes and uh, both protoplasts and the spheroplasts once they are formed they are going to undergo osmotic lysis and they cannot stay or live in the bacteria as such uh, on the other hand, uh, the L forms. The L forms were first discovered in the abscess of a patient in a Lister Institute of London, and uh, they basically either develop spontaneously in the presence of penicillins that interfere with cell wall synthesis, or uh, in the presence of lysozymes that are going to digest the disaccharides in the peptides. And um, once this, uh, uh, they are removed, uh, the cell wall is removed. They are uh, the L forms are going to take up the pink color or they become gram negative and they are of variable sizes and when the inhibitory substance is removed they can again develop their own cell wall so they can still once they are formed they can still grow and divide whereas the spiroplast and the uh, protoplast cannot multiply they are non-viable organisms that do not multiply so you're going to get mcqs on l forms protoplast and the spiroplast that is why you should know what these uh, structures are then there is one bacteria which is normally or naturally wallless and that is mycoplasma 
Microplasmas are naturally wall-less bacteria. You can see these organisms, they do not have a cell wall around them. They just have the, the, uh, the cytoplasmic membrane. And in the cytoplasmic membrane or the plasma membrane, it has these sterols. And they are capable of adopting parasitic existence in osmotically favorable environments. And because there is no cell wall, they are naturally resistant to all antibiotics that are going to target the cell wall. Again, this constitutes one of your MCQ. Mycoplasma is a naturally wall-less organism. Burbernist granules or volatin granules are other structures which all of you should be familiar with. And these structures, the other name from this is metachromatic granules. They are so-called because they have the capability to stain different elements of a cell in different colors. Metachromatic granules are, uh, uh, these are high energy reserves which are stored in the form of metaphosphates and they are used for ATP synthesis. Now if you look at this Albert stain or methylene blue stain, Albert stain uh, these the, the metachromatic granules are with Albert stain they become deep purple in color and the bacteria remains green in color. So you see two colors one which is picked up by the metachromatic granules and the second is the green color of uh, uh, the organism. Here is the methylene blue stain and you can make out the, these red metachromatic granules the meta, uh, red or dark uh, uh, this uh, bluish purple metachromatic granules whereas the organism remains purple in color. So these are metachromatic granules seen in Corina bacterium diphtheria. Then we come to the cell wall of acid fast bacilli or the best example of acid fast bacilli is mycobacterium tuberculosis. They are called acid fast because they have a very thick waxy layer around it. This layer is a waxy layer which is seen around the cell cell wall of uh, these acid fast bacilli and this uh, waxy layer is composed of mycolic acid and glycolipids and these glycolipids and my, my, uh, mycolic acid are going to alter the staining properties of this organism. They are going to tightly get hold to the dye when you st once you start staining this, uh, this organism the dye is held by uh, this uh, the waxy layer and it is going to resist decolorization by acids and alcohol and that is why they are called acid fast bacilli but in order for the stain to get inside the cell you have to heat the slide so that the stain can enter when you heat the slide the mycolic acid or the waxy layer melts and the the dye then goes in gets tightly attached to this peptidoglycan mycolic acid layer and it, and it is going to then resist decolorization by acid and alcohol and it's going to pick up the counter stain which is saffron for this uh, these organisms so these are acid fast bacteria the cell wall is different from that of gram positive and gram negative bacteria because it has mycolic acid and glycolipids which create a waxy layer around them and this again constitutes one of your MCQs. So keeping all this in mind, this slide is showing you the different characteristics of gram positive bacteria, gram negative bacteria and acid fast bacteria. The first is the peptidoglycan which I have told you with gram positive bacteria it is very thick, thin in gram negative bacteria and very small of uh, in or uh, uh, thin with acid fast bacilli. Ticoic acid, characteristic feature of gram positive bacteria, not seen in gram negative bacteria or acid fast bacilli. Lipids, thick lipid layer is seen with gram negative bacteria, and mycolic acid and other vaxi, uh, vaxes and glycolipids are seen in acid fast organism, but you don't see them in gram negative uh, positive bacteria. Outer membrane, periplasmic space is unique for gram negative bacteria but not seen in gram positive bacteria or acid fast bacteria. Cell shape in case of because of the thick peptidoglycan layer it is always rigid. Enzymatic digestion results in gram positive uh, bacteria results in formation of protoplasts with gram negative bacteria it results in formation of spiroplasts but with the waxy layer acid fast bacteria are difficult to digest. So with this 
we have done with the cell wall of gram positive bacteria gram negative bacteria acid fast bacilli and uh, for the, your assignment i have given you three mcqs which you generally see in your exam so you have to answer the mcqs within 24 hours for your attendance thank you very much so the general this, these are the three mcqs Peptidoglycan layer is the major constituent of cell wall of which of the following organism? Which of the following statement best describes a gram-negative bacteria? And the third is which of the following is a natural cell wall deficient organism?